Ever since I showed everyone a while back that I had picked up a new Beretta 92 Elite LTT, a lot of people have wanted me to compare it side by side to another gun they know I already have, which is the Beretta 92 Centurion Tactical from Wilson Combat. A lot of people have told me that they have narrowed it down to either this gun or this gun, and they're trying to decide between the two because there are some minor differences between these guns, and they want to know, are there any major differences between the guns they should know about? Well, Berettas are my favorite semi-automatic guns, so I thought, you know what? I would love to do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two guns and let you know what the differences actually are between the two models. Before we go into any great detail about the differences between these two models, let's talk about the things that are the same. They are both Type Gs. They are decocker only. They do not have a manual safety. They both use the same Beretta 92A1 frames. They both have the railed frames. They both have enhanced serrations on the front and the back. They have the actual cross serrations to give these more of a checkered pattern to give you more grip. They both have D springs in them instead of the standard stock springs, so they both will have a little bit lighter actions on them. They both have all metal parts. The guide rods, the safety, etc. are all metal on both guns. Both guns also come with extended magazine releases installed. Both guns do also have target crowned barrels. Both guns do come stock with G10 thin grips. These are not the grips that came stock on the LTT. It came with a pair of black grips, seen here with the LTT logo on them. But I don't like black grips, so I changed them out. They both have skeletonized hammers, and they both have blacked out rear battle type sights. And of course, it goes without saying, they're both double action, single action guns. Now that we've covered the things these two guns have in common physically, before we go into performance, let's talk about the physical differences between these two guns, as slight as they may be. Now, one of the biggest physical differences between the two guns is the Wilson Combat Centurion is, of course, a Centurion slide, which means it's about 0.4 inches shorter. The one here with the silver barrel is a standard vertex slide, so it's a little longer, and therefore the barrels are a little different. You have a little bit of difference in barrel length. Now that will affect ballistics a tiny bit, but not a whole lot, but if you're someone that wants the most you can get, that barrel length might be a difference that matters to you. Another difference between the slides is the front of the slide on the LTT is serrated. It has these little sawtooth serrations. And the Wilson Combat is just the more traditional slide with no serrations on the front. Now those front serrations don't make a huge difference because Berettas are real easy to get a hold of and rack the slide from the front of the gun if you want to. But if you're wearing gloves, it's easy to slip off this little indentation in the front and plus let's get your fingers kind of close to the barrel. So if you're wearing gloves or you don't like to get your fingers too close to the barrel, these serrations make it a lot easier to rack the slide. Another fairly big physical differences between the two guns is the LTT has the standard trigger guard. It is radiused out, so it is a nice trigger guard, but it's the standard configuration for the front here. Whereas the Wilson Combat has a rounded off trigger guard, I actually prefer this, both the way it looks and the way it feels in your hand. Now, as I said, both guns have blacked out rear sights, combat style rear sights. The LTT has a red fiber optic, front sight standard on the gun, but you can get other sights if you like. The front sight on the Wilson Combat is a night sight with this nice blaze orange circle on it. I actually like this sight a lot better. One other difference is that the Wilson Combat comes with a magazine guide installed, a Wilson Combat magazine guide. The LTT does not have the magazine guide, but it does have a flat mainspring housing, which is different from the little lanyard loop that is standard on the Berettas. Another small difference is the LTT comes standard with three 15-round magazines, whereas the Wilson Combat comes with two 17-round magazines and one 20-round magazine. Finish-wise, the Wilson Combat gun is all black. It has that nice, kind of shiny black look to it. It's a very nice finished gun, whereas the LTT has that cool two-tone look with the stainless trigger, grip screws, and barrel. Now, one big difference to me between these two guns is the LTT actually uses the Beretta conversion safety to make this a Type G, whereas the Wilson Combat actually has the Wilson Combat modification done to it, so it has more of a traditional safety on it. 
You can really see how this safety looks a lot different. Doesn't really look like it melds with the gun quite as well. Whereas this safety looks much more like a stock ambi safety. If you compare it to the standard stock ambi safety on a regular non-converted Beretta, you can see aesthetically it's much more similar. I just like how the Wilson Combat one looks better, looks more traditional, goes with the lines of the gun better. Doesn't stick out quite so far there at the very top of the safety bar. I just like the Wilson Combat conversion much better than I do the one from Beretta. Now let's get into the performance of these two guns at the range. Which one excels? Which one is the winner? First off, let's look at the double action trigger weights. The double action trigger weight on the LTT is right at eight pounds. It's pretty much eight pounds even. The double action trigger pull of the Wilson Combat is right at seven and a half pounds. It is a half pound lighter. If you compare both of those weights to the stock gun, the stock gun has a double action weight of eight and a half pounds. So it's a half pound lighter on the LTT. It's a pound lighter on the Wilson Combat. Now, when we look at the single action trigger pull of the LTT, it's right at four and a quarter pounds. So four and a quarter pounds, that's a great weight for a good single action self-defense trigger. It's not a competition level trigger, but for safety and for carry, that's a great weight. And the Wilson Combat doesn't come in much less. It comes in at right at four pounds, so a quarter pound difference. Still a great trigger weight for self-defense. Now, once again, when you compare that to the stock gun, the stock gun's single action pull is about four and three quarter pounds. I will say this gun's been shot quite a bit more than the other two guns, but this one comes in at about four and three quarters pounds, but it can go up to about five pounds on a new gun. That gives you about a half a pound to a three quarter pound advantage with the LTT, and it gives you about a three quarters to a full pound difference for the Wilson Combat. So how do those small physical differences and those small differences in trigger weights pan out at the range? Which gun comes out on top? Well, I'm gonna have to tell you, I can't tell. Uh, they both perform exactly the same to me. I will give a small advantage to the Wilson Combat when it comes to how tight the frame to slide fit is. It is slightly better. I mean, slightly in the most minuscule way, but when it comes to performance, that didn't really matter at all. I just couldn't notice those small differences between these two tricked out Berettas. During the daylight hours, the sights worked the same, the triggers felt the same to me, the guns reloaded the same. They're both just awesome guns. I will say I do like both of them better than a stock 92, but is it a big difference over a stock 92? No, it's the little things, and sometimes it's the little things that matter to people. But like I said, when it comes to telling the difference between these two very nice and very similar guns, I just couldn't tell the difference. I'm just not a competition shooter. I'm not a professional shooter or even such an avid shooter that I make a science out of it. I didn't notice those small differences. I'm just not that, uh, I guess, attuned to subtleties. Now, I like to think I can tell the difference between a bad trigger and a good trigger and a good trigger and a great trigger. Like if you were to put them on a scale from one to 10, I can tell the difference between a one and a five and a five and a nine. But when it gets down to where you're comparing like say a 9.4 and a 9.1, I can't really tell the difference. They perform the same to me. I just don't spend enough time at the range paying close attention to those minute differences. I spend most of my time at the range trying not to get hot brass in my cleavage. Uh, maybe I should change the way I dress at the range, but you know, part of going to the range is looking good, so I'm not gonna change that. So as far as this comparison goes, I can show you the physical differences and I can tell you that both of them are great at the range, but as far as those minute differences in performances go, those are just so far beyond my abilities to appreciate. So there you have it, a side-by-side -side comparison of two carry-oriented Beretta 92 pistols. If you're trying to make a choice between these two guns, like I said, performance is so similar that it's indistinguishable. So making a decision based on performance probably isn't gonna be possible. That's probably not gonna help you make your decision. You're gonna to have to make your decision based on other little differences between these two guns. Do you like the front serrations or do you not like the front serrations? Do you like the rounded off trigger guard or do you like the more traditional trigger guard? Do you like the more traditional safety or do you like the add-on safety? Do you like the two-tone looks of the Elite or do you like the traditional all-black looks of the Wilson Combat? 
Do you like the slightly shortened profile of the Centurion or do you prefer the fuller size of the Elite LTT? It's going to be those things that actually make your decision for you. The other differences between the guns are things you can change, such as if you like the magazine guide on the Wilson Combat for 50 bucks, you can put one on the LTT. If you like the fiber optic front sight better, like on the LTT, you can switch that out for the one on the Centurion and vice versa. If you like the 17 round mag, you can switch them back and forth. You can use either mag in either one of these guns. It really is going to come down to those slight differences. Now, me personally, people are going to ask me which one I prefer, and it's really a tough decision here. I love both of these guns, but if I could only have one, if someone was telling me you could only have one of these, which one would I take? Well, by a small margin, it would be the Elite LTT. Although I don't like the safety as much on it, I do like the fact that it's the two-tone. I like that two-tone because I'm a big nerd, and I like the fact that it looks like the Samurai Edge 92s from Resident Evil, so I really like that. I also really like the front serrations on this gun, and I actually do like having that little bit extra barrel on it, so in the end, I like those things better about this gun. Now, choosing this gun over this gun would be dependent on a couple of things, though. There are a few things from the LTT that I would want to change to make it more like the Wilson Combat. I can't change the safety, so I would have to live with the safety. But one thing I would like to do, I would like to put the magazine guide on the LTT. I would also like to change out the front sight for the same type of night sight that's on the Wilson Combat. And I would like to get some 17 round mags for this one. And luckily, you can do all of that pretty much for the price differences between the two guns. Because the MSRP on the Wilson Combat is $1,250, whereas the MSRP on the LTT is only $1,100. Now, that's not what you're actually going to pay for them retail, but it gives you an idea of the difference in cost of the two guns. And for that $100 to $150 difference, like I said, you can change the front sight, you can put, add the mag guide, and you can upgrade some magazines. But if I'm being really honest, the main reason I would carry this one over this one is because of the fact it does look like the Resident Evil Berettas. I am ordering some grips from, I believe it's called DS Grips, that are the Raccoon City Police Department grips, so this will be like a Samurai Edge Beretta. That, to a nerd like myself, is awesome. So because of that, and because of some little features I like better about this gun, when it comes down to the two, the one I would choose, like I said, is the Elite LTT. But if you were to choose the other one, if you were to choose the Wilson Combat over the LTT, I would totally understand why you did. Like I said, I like some features of it a lot better, specifically the rounded trigger guard and the actual conversion type safety. But in the end, the deciding factor between the two for me, like I said, is that sci-fi goodness of the Elite LTT. But I can see how that would not matter to a lot of people, especially if you're not a sci-fi aficionado like myself. <gasps> Oops. Thank you.